Growing in Christ 40 Days to Deeper Faith Day 21 Divine Speed Eternal Sight As long as it is day, we must do the works of Him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am within the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed, and came home seeing. John chapter 9 verses from 4 to 7 Washed clean at the pool of Siloam His day begins like any other, begging for a scrap of food or a cup of water, listening to the sounds of the world rushing by, feeling his way to an invisible corner where he can just disappear. No support, no kindness, no hope. Darkness. That's all the blind man has never known. Born this way and destined to die as a lonely outcast. Stretching out a miserable existence as a second-class citizen or as those in the holy city have labeled him a sinner. So it comes as no surprise when a certain question sticks in his ear from a group of men passing by. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he is born blind? The answer changes everything. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. That voice. The blind man detects a tone of compassion and love in each word, two things he is not used to receiving. And then the unexpected. Moistened fingertips gently massage his eyes. Go, the same voice commands, wash in the pool of Siloam. The man gets up and makes his way to Jerusalem's most famous pool. He dips his hand in the cool water and frantically drenches his face. As the last bit of mud rolls out his cheek, his eyelids begin to flutter and he blinks a few times. Suddenly, light! It is painful at first, but then it quickly turns beautiful. Glorious! Colors and shapes come into focus. He sees sunlight simmering on water. He turns and locks eyes with people, faces of friends and family he has never before seen. Can it really be true? The man I met has the power to bring light to my darkened eyes? Let's explore together the word from John chapter 9 verses from 1 to 41. Bible scholars who analyze this story often have a lot to say about the mud Jesus puts on this beggar's eyes. They describe it as a reminder of God's creation of man out of clay, and they point that Pharisees would consider the making of mud to be work and unlawful on the Sabbath. While each of these points may be true, I can't help thinking about Christ's humanity in this miracle. Each time I read this passage, I'm struck by a mind-blowing truth. Jesus is fully man and fully God. Sadly though, far too many people are willing to believe one or another one, but not both. Just flip through the average illustrated children's Bible and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Too often, Jesus is depicted as a smiling, blue-eyed, blonde bearded youth pastorish surfer dude. Few artists present him as a guy's guy, the type who would actually, well, spit. But Jesus spat, and that's not all. He burped, he laughed, he probably got the hiccups, 
Jesus also was spat upon and felt pain when he was beaten, whipped, and crucified. Yet his humanity was able to do some pretty amazing things. He was able to heal people because Jesus is not fully man, he is fully God. That is why his spit, his touch, his word could do amazing things. He could heal every affliction, even death itself. He never seen it in word, actions or thought. After he died, he came back to life. Scripture does record Jesus spitting one last time. In Revelation 3.16, he spits out those who are lukewarm in their love for him. Go back and reread today's passage and think about this. Jesus experienced life as we do, but he is also God, so you can talk to him at any time about what's going on in your life, and you can trust that he will understand. Why not talk to him right now? Never try to fit Jesus into your image of how the Messiah should look and act. That's what the Jewish priests did. Men who did committed their lives to studying the scriptures and seeking God's Son actually met Jesus face to face and yet they rejected him. Imagine that. They distrusted Jesus because he didn't fit their human definition of how Messiah should look and behave. Just as we said back in day 19, focus on what scripture says about the Lord, not your impression or mistruth about him. When you talk to others about Jesus, how do you describe him? You can share your comments below. Embrace the mystery of the Trinity. Think about this. We have one God, but he is three persons. Author and scholar James Montgomery Boyce explains it this way in his book The Sovereign God. If you hold out your hand and look at it, each of these three things is present. There is light because it is only by light that you can see your hand. There is also heat between your head and your hand. You can prove it by holding out a thermometer. It will vary as you go from cold room to a warm room or from outside to indoor. Finally, there is an air. You can blow on your head and feel it. You can wave your hand and the dust on your face. Voice points out that while light, heat and air are distinct from each other, it is impossible to have any one without the others, at least in an early setting. They are three and yet they are one. Work it out. Read John chapter 1 verse 14 and then share your own words how Jesus is fully divine and fully human and the second person of the Godhead. Now let's pray together. Jesus, I know that you are the one and only triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe this. Not because I understand it, but because the Bible teaches it, and the Holy Spirit testifies in my heart to these truths. I ask you, God, help me to explain these truths to others. I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.